the more I think about this, I notice that this is very similar to our brain. We ask it to focus on a particular thing, but it goes on rambling on and on about something else in the background. You see, right now, it looks like I'm giving a speech to you, but internally I'm having a conversation about lunch. <laughs> The mind is similar to the mailbox in yet another way. We cannot do anything about the junk that is happening there. In the case of mailbox, even if we complain, the USPS will continue to deliver junk mail. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the USPS does not bother about delivering our packages on time, but they want to absolutely make sure that each and every one of us gets our daily quota of junk mail. Likewise, we do not have any control over our brain. So when this incredibly complex brain of ours gets tired from all the work it does and wants to shut down on its own, why do you ever want to pour coffee into it and jumpstart it again? Stop drinking coffee and let your mind take some rest. I can see that some of you here love coffee because you're starting to look as if you want to throw stones at me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered why you feel energetic and fresh after drinking coffee, even though caffeine is, does not contain any nutrients or it's not calorific either? Well, the muscles, when they do some work, they burn up energy and they release adenosine as a byproduct into the blood. The brain takes note of the level of adenosine in your blood, and when this shoots up above a threshold, it creates a feeling of tiredness in you. Enter caffeine. Because of the chemical nature of caffeine, it is able to trick the mind into thinking that the adenosine level is low, and thereby you do not feel tired. Now you might want to ask me, why is this bad? Let's say if you put your hand on this towel, you will pull it back immediately because you have experienced a sharp sensation of pain. If the brain does not create pain for you, in that case, you keep on putting your hand on your stuff and you'll end up burning your hand and hurting yourself. So it's always not a good idea to mess with your internal mechanisms. Before I finally make my point, let's take a look at how athletes and sports people perform. Curiously enough, during tennis matches, you have noticed that players like Nadal or Sharapova, they tend to snack on bananas and drink water to pick up the energy levels. We definitely do not see them drinking coffee when they are having a, <laughs> <laughs> when they are having a long day at the office. This is because they have trained themselves to perform. And training, uh, I, I, no, I agree without any doubt that the, the fantastic taste and the aroma of coffee gets us up and going immediately after we drink it. But then take a moment and imagine how wonderful you're going to feel if you can get your body to supply energy in its own natural way without having to force it with caffeine all the time. Training your body to do so is actually very simple. Eat right, sleep well, and do exercises as often. So, I'd like to conclude with my speech by saying that stop drinking coffee. And if you've already become a coffee addict and you're very zealous about it, uh, maybe you don't, have, you, don't, you don't have to cut it down all the way. You can, you can always look at limiting your caffeine intake. So, thank you. Stay healthy, wealthy, and wise.